Okay, Greg, come on, baby. Okay, man. <laughs> Nate Watts, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, Greg. Tell me about growing up. Was there much music at home? Oh, I'm from Detroit. Are you yeah. joking? Motown was in full swing when I was growing up. Oh, yes, music all the time. Churches. Um, we had elementary school with bands. Me, matter of fact, me and Ray Parker and Ollie Brown had a band in elementary, and then we were eight years old, called the Stingrays. And we played it, we got written up in the local newspaper. So, yes, it's music all the time. Been music all my life. Yeah. You started out on trumpet. Why trumpet? Yeah, trumpet. Because that's the first thing I picked up. <laughs> they said, What do you want to play when you were in elementary? I said, Trumpet. And uh, I played trumpet. I was trying to be uh, Lee Morgan. I really wanted to be as good as Lee Morgan. But it didn't quite make it, but I, I, I chose a better instrument for me. Yeah. yeah, and tell me about your switch to bass. You you um, learned listening to, I listen to records. To, yeah, I, 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 I taught myself. I'm self-taught. Uh, you know, even though I can read because it changed the club, but I was self-taught. I used to listen to records and mimic them. Okay, and that's how I taught myself how to play bass. That was after high school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, what sort of records were you listening to? Oh, uh, everything from Jimmy Hill. The first stuff I was in, the first group I was in was a rock group. Believe it or not. And I uh, uh, used to listen to Hendrix. It was a black rock group. It was a guy named Martin Kinchin. God bless him. I hope he's still around. Uh, uh, he played, he was a Hendrix freak. You know, and everything was Hendrix, so that's the first thing. And then the R&B, and then the uh, uh, jazz. You know? yeah. Was there a local music store that you used to frequent that would look after you? Uh, no. Uh, I. I uh, like I said, I was uh, I would go buy strings, but I you know well, my budget we didn't buy strings too often. So the first bass I got uh, was from a local store, store called Grinnell's. Grinnell's was a music store. It went out of business a long time ago, but uh, it was a music store downtown Detroit. And it was a Greco bass, if you can believe what, what a Greco is. It was made in Japan. It was hollow body. I, I think you, you can't find them anymore either. Yeah, I, I believe you used to sit in on sessions with the, the Funk Brothers and. Oh uh, well, I, I I just sit. I used to watch them yeah. when I was a kid. That's when I was eight. I was still playing trumpet then, and I used to look through them. We used to walk all the way. It was in my neighborhood. We could was about a mile away, maybe a mile and a half, and we used to look through the windows to watch them play. But I never sat in front of them and, and, and 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 play bass with them. No. Yeah. So what kind of things do you learn from guys like that? Attitude, sound, who was hip, <laughs> you know, who was rocking, who was the drummer, the beats of the drum, you know, you, you pick up everything if you're a musician. You know, it's about attitude and about sound. That's, that's the first thing you learn when you but I was still a kid, like I said, eight, nine, ten years old. So, yeah. it gave me inspiration mostly. When you started getting into playing the bass, who were the bass players that you were James Jameson first, Chuck Rainey, a guy named Lucky Scott. They played in Chicago, and uh, let me think, uh, who's the last one I used to As I got, uh, as I got started playing more, I, li I, I listened to uh, uh, Stanley, as I got more. But he was so complicated for me when I first started. It was just, uh, I, I said, okay. <laughs> but these, all, those, all those cats are great bass players. Yeah. Uh, 1974, you got a call to come and... Uh, Play with Stevie. Uh, yeah. How did Stevie know about you? How did that come uh, about? Ray Parker recommended me. Ray Parker had just left them, and uh, we were me and Ray Parker. That's my oldest friend. We grew up together, five houses down in the same block. And uh, if you don't know who Ray Parker Jr., you know who he is, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, he recommended me. They told me to learn as much as I could over the weekend, and they flew me down to Memphis. I went there, and I uh, was surprised when I knew I was made to love her. Because I had got a 45 from my cousin, gave it to me, and that's one of the first learned of complicated songs I ever tried to learn was that. And um, I had a little, bit, a little bit of that, and then I played uh, the show, and then he flew me back to LA and I auditioned with other uh, bass players, and I got the gig. What was the first recording, first song you did with Stevie? Ooh, the first release song. We did a bunch of them but that wasn't released, but the first one was, um, I think Sir Duke was the first one. I wish it was the first single, but I think Sir Duke was the first one we did with the band. I think that came first. And um, 
then the first number one, the I Wish came out at number one. And so that's the Sauce of Kid Life was my first album. That was in 76. But we did most of the stuff in 75. We did some songs and then we make the album. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, St Stevie is known for doing uh, bass parts oh, yeah. on the keys. Oh, yeah. How do you and he work out? He's the, the boss, part. okay? He's yeah. a, I did like maybe one third, one fourth of all the songs. He does, but he's going to put his stuff on it. He was doing it before I was, okay? You know what I mean? So, what uh, well, the song he said, Nate, I want you to play on this. Uh, Nate, then, then you, you, this will be good for you. Or, or he does it by himself. Yeah. Uh, the uh, intro to I Wish is a classic bass line. Uh -huh. Tell me about uh, how that part came about. Well, he called me up. I went home and called me up about, um, um, uh, about I just said I went home and he called me back up about uh, 1 o'clock in the morning. He said, Nate, I want you to come down here. And he, and he had the piano. I said, follow the piano, all right? And I did, and he said, now do some slides. Do, 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 do you. And I did all that. And then he, I think he came back and put some uh, a synthesizer under it to fatten the bass sound up. That's what I know. I, I think he did. But I uh, really can't tell. Do you remember what bass and amp you were using? I was using, uh, I was direct. Actually, I was direct. And I was using my um, um, uh, jazz. I had a jazz. I had a 79 jazz or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Working on the album Songs in the Key of Life, mm -hmm. did you have a sense of how great that album was at the time? Well, the whole thing, at the time, I couldn't believe it because, you know, I had been around it and I'm fresh and I'm new. And I said, this guy's really a genius. Okay, that's the first thing I said. And, and, uh, and, the, and I, had, I had been on a record before that. And um, I, um, it was a local record called, the Final, uh, called Keep On Walking by the Final Decisions. And that was the first record I ever played on. This was the second one. And, and so um, it was just amazing. You know, all the different songs, all, all the different patterns. I said, God, you know, it just opened my head up to music like crazy by being around it. It was like a school of wonder. That's what I call it. OK? Uh, what about some of the other sessions you've done with other people? What are your, your favorites? Uh, one of them is, uh, one of them is uh, uh, Let's Get Serious. The other one's Heartbreak Hotel on Jackson's. The other one's just Say, Say, Say with uh, uh, Paul McCartney. And the other thing, uh, He's So Shy by the Porter Sisters. I'm so excited. Uh, I got a bunch of them that I, I, I had fun with. All of them were top, top, on the number one hits, too. That's a good thing. Yeah. I got, let me see, what, what's the other one? Um, one of my favorite was with Michael on, on, on uh, Heartbreak Hotel. That was incredible because she said, hey, Nate, I want you to do this. You know, I want you to do this. Do this. Do your slide thing. <laughs> yeah, okay, it was great, man. Uh, tell me about your gear journey throughout the years and then your association well, with some of the gear companies. Oh, uh, well, the gear companies I'm using now is Harky. And, and most of my two, my, two of my best are uh, hard music and hard amp right now. And, uh, uh, and I've been dealing with Zoom for electronics. And Elixir strings. I love Elixir strings. They've been with me all the time. So for the last 10 years. And that's basically all I, I have. Zoom is making some new pedals that I'm going to check out. And they got new stuff. I just was over there when they had the corporate meeting today. I, and I played one song. And uh, uh, hard I'm going to see now. And uh, Alexa, I'm going to say, and I'm, I'm going to see uh, Reunion, Reunion Blues, uh, Case Company. I'm going to see them. I'm going to leave you. Yeah. Uh, you come to the NAMM show quite a bit. What do you like about the NAMM show? Uh, the NAMM show has been the opportunity to see new stuff and see a bunch of friends you haven't seen in a long time, okay? I mean, I'm seeing cats I haven't seen that come here that I haven't seen in like five, ten years, okay? So that's a good thing. It's a good journey of musicians. And you're going to learn, you talk, and you learn so much from them and uh, about what they've been doing, how they've been doing, and who they've been doing, and you know what I mean? Who they've been playing with, you know? So, so okay. it's a good thing. Uh, are you a collector of basses? Do you keep your basses? Uh, I, I got a bunch of basses, but I'm not a collector. Yeah. I, I, I got a lot, but uh, yeah, I, 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 got, I got about 13, something yeah. like that. Any, any regret basses, ones that got away? Yeah, uh, I got a regret for my uh, P bass. Uh, who my, I let my cousin use and it disappeared. And uh, the other one is uh, my jazz bass, the one I did I Wish with, disappeared from the studio. So I don't know. Those are two, I couldn't find it nowhere. So, yeah. 
tell me about some of the drummers that you've locked in with, your, your favorite drummers. Oh, there's a bunch of them. Um, Dennis was one of Dennis Davis, um, James Gasson. Um, oh, God, let me think. Man. I played with Jeff on a lot of sessions, Picaro. I played with um, uh, one of the new guys, the Stanley. He's incredible right now, Stanley uh, Randolph. Uh, Raymond Pounds played on Sound Skill Life album with me. Uh, Oh, so many. I don't see uh, Sugarfoot, uh, uh, Jonathan Moffat. Uh, God, I'm, saying, I'm trying to think who played on that. Ed Green, Ed, 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 Ed Green, and uh, um, what's my cheeseburger, 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 cheeseburger. That's what we always used to say all the time. Uh, uh, Jr. John Robinson. That's the one. Are you recording? We're good. And John Robinson. And John <laughs> Robinson. <laughs> okay. When you look back at your career with Stevie Wonder, what are some of the great memories that come to mind? Oh man, one of the funniest things in the world was uh, when I first joined, I must have been about, it was about 1975, we are doing Human Kindness Day, okay? And uh, it was like maybe 250,000 people there, something like that, right over from the Washington Monument, okay? So we're getting ready to go, and I get, get out of the cab, and Steve gonna, he's gonna, I said, Steve, get out the other side. He said, oh, what do you think? I can't get out. I can't hear him come. The cab come. So I'm holding the door like that. I said, Steve, you should get out the other side. He said, no. I didn't hear the car and he slammed my finger in the door. I got, I got three stitches in, in his hand, and I had to go play the net that same day. So that was one of the most memorable things, uh, you know. And, uh, and I did, actually, actually did okay because I learned that's how I started playing with three fingers then. I learned how to play with three fingers, and it helped me. And, uh, I was that Larry Graham actually came up and said, man, you, you sounded good for a young fella. You're going to be all right. <laughs> That's a good thing to hear from him. Yeah. And I believe uh, you're bringing out your debut album of your own? Yes, I'm doing an album of my own. I got everybody on it there. That's my friends. I mean, all the bass players. I got, I got Victor Wooten. I got Marcus Millen. I got Al Turner. I got Ralph Armstrong. I got, uh, what's more? Uh, it's just so many. It's ridiculous. It's a, a one song, and then I got help from Steve and everybody else. Yeah, it, um, all the songs written by you. Or did you have? To yes, most of them. Some of them is Some co-wrote. Most all of them co-wrote written by me, and one some by myself. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what else is happening this year? Uh, we don't know yet. I'm trying to get them to come and see you guys. You know what I mean? I'm trying to get them to do a South East, Southeast Asia uh, gig, uh, you know, tour, but. He, we just came off a long tour, all, like we was working all last year, so he's sitting down with his kids right now. Yeah. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. What are you most proud of? That I lasted as long as I did, okay? And that, that's one thing I'm proud of. And I'm proud of the accomplishments I did, the stuff I played. I mean, how many people could say they played with Paul McCartney, okay? Or playing on one of his songs, okay? Uh, and, 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 and I'm still here. I'm still going. That's one of the great things, and 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 recognition is uh, is amazing. And all the all the old, 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 old hey unk, hey unk. He said, "You know you're a legend." I said, "Don't say that, because that means I'm dead." <laughs> but no, it doesn't. But uh, I, I, I've had a great life. I had no 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 regrets at all. None. Yeah. Nate, what's next for your time? All right. Thank you, my brother. All the best, Gary. Thanks, man.